Mr. Speaker, Speaker, what is what is your response to Republicans who say this move should cost you your job and that if you don't resign, they will try to oust you? Uh, I am not resigning, and it is um, it is, in my view, an absurd notion that someone would bring a vacate motion when we are simply here trying to do our jobs. Um, it is not helpful to the cause. It is not helpful to the country. It does not help the House Republicans advance our agenda, which is in the best interest of the American people here, a secure border, uh, sound governance. Uh, and it's not helpful to the unity that we have in, in the body. Look, we have, a, we have a very important mission here. Our mission is very clear. The reason most of us, I can speak for the House Republicans, the reason every House Republican ran for Congress is that they, they, because they wanted to come here and help to save this beleaguered republic of ours. We want to save the country. We believe that we're in an existential moment. We really do. This is a civilizational moment. It's a, uh, it, it's a moment where we're going to decide in this election cycle which vision we have for the country. See, we believe, and you all have heard me say before, we believe in the founding principles, the foundations of America, things like individual freedom and limited government and the rule of law and peace through strength and fiscal responsibility and free markets and human dignity, the foundation, all the anchor points that, that make us the exceptional nation that we are. And, and right now we're in, a, we're in a, a political struggle, a battle between a completely different vision for the country. We, we have colleagues in the Congress who envision for us not those things. They have disdain for those things I just listed. They instead envision that America should be remade in the form of some sort of, you know, European-style socialist utopia. That is a dangerous fool's errand. That is a road to Marxism, communism, you know, socialism. That's a step towards those eventualities, and that is not who we are as a country. And so for us to accomplish our mission, which is to save the republic, we need to add more Republicans to the House and grow the House majority so we have more votes. We need to, we need to win back the Republican majority in the Senate, and we need to restore Donald, Donald J. Trump to the White House as our nominee. I believe all those things will happen, but we have to we have to have a united front, and we have to have our members work together. Mr. And we'll be we'll be working today uh, to do that very thing. Um, look, we are in we are in unprecedented times. Okay, um, we're in dangerous times, as has been articulated here around the world and here at home. We need steady leadership. We need steady hands at the wheel. I, look, I regard myself as a as a wartime speaker. I mean, in a literal sense, we are. I knew that when I took the gavel. I didn't anticipate that this would be an easy path. Former Speaker Newt Gingrich posted a couple days ago on his social media that um, this is the hardest challenge that's faced a speaker probably in the history of the country, in the moment that we're in right now. He said arguably uh, maybe comparable to the Civil War, but maybe worse. A single vote margin at a difficult time when the nation is terribly divided. The way we get through that is we show unity and we explain how we have answers to all these great challenges. We have those answers. We shouldn't get in the way of ourselves. Mr. Mr. Speaker, we're going we're to work this out today, and we'll have a lot more comment for you today, um, uh, for you later. But um, I'm going to tell you that I am not concerned about this. I am going to do my job, and I think that's what the American people. Is there any upside to calling 